Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CBC Kids Sunday Service for May 3rd, 2020. My name is Mark Goko, and I'll be teaching this morning's lesson. But before we jump into it, I want to share with you a few very important announcements for both kids and parents. So please get ready to mark your calendars. First up, this upcoming Friday, May 8th, J12 will be meeting via Zoom from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. So if you're free, definitely come join us for a time of learning and fellowship together. Our second announcement is in regards to next Sunday, May 10th, which is Mother's Day. We'll be having a short time to celebrate and to honor the mothers that we have in our church community and in our lives from 10.30 to 10.45 a.m. on Zoom. If you want more information regarding this event, please follow the Children's Ministry blog online. And lastly, in relation to Mother's Day, Pastor Jason is planning to compile a video of kids thanking their mothers and saying Happy Mother's Day. And Dad, we need your help with this one. If you want to be involved in this video, all you have to do is record two short clips of your kids or your kids saying number one in your first clip one or two things that they're thankful for about their mom. And in a second short clip, please record them just saying, Happy Mother's Day. And you can join in on that if you like as well. Send that over to Pastor Jason and he'll put together a really, really nice video to honor the mothers that we have at our church in our lives. So if you're interested in doing that, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to, to how that video actually turns out. All right, let's begin with today's memory verse. So. If you look closely, the memory verse is now different because we're actually starting a brand new series on how to study the Bible. We just left a series on Jesus' life, which is really, really amazing to see what he was like on earth and what he taught while he was here on earth. But now we have a brand new memory verse to try to commit to memory together. So let's read it real quickly. Please follow along. Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. And this particular passage comes from Psalm 119, verse 105. Let's read that one more time together. Follow along with me. Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. Psalm 119, verse 105. So when I look at this verse, and as we work together in memorizing it, something that I can't help but think of is what we see here. And this is a photo that actually I took when I used to live in New York. And New York is on the opposite side of the country, very, very far away, so far that it actually has a coastline that borders the Atlantic Ocean. California borders the Pacific, In this case, it's the Atlantic. And the first thing I saw during a visit to the coast was a lighthouse, this lighthouse. And when I read this verse, I cannot help but think of lighthouses. What does a lighthouse do? A lighthouse is put along the coastline so that during the nighttime or during some very, very bad storms, boats that are out in the ocean don't hit the coastline accidentally because when it's dark, you can't see where the sea ends and where the land begins. So lighthouses are there to illuminate the light, to be a beacon to lead boats through treacherous waters. When it's very, very stormy and the waves are very, very big, the lighthouse is there to help them. So they have a very important role in the boat navigating through darkness, through storms, and through very, very large waves. In the same way, the Bible does that for us. The Bible is the one who helps us navigate through life, whether things are going well or whether things are going not so great and there's darkness everywhere. The Bible is like a lighthouse, a great big lamp that guides us and tells us where to go in order to keep us safe and to keep us strong in our relationship with God. So definitely think about a lighthouse when you're working on this memory verse. Now let's enter a time of worship together. There's gonna be two songs this morning. The first one will be from the Ng family. So thank you to the Ng family for leading us in worship this morning. And that video will be embedded in this one, so you don't need to pause. But for the second song, I'll put the link in the description below 
And all you have to do is pause this video, hit that link, and then worship together for the second song, and then we'll resume our time together here this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for who you are. Thank you for being such a good God to us and for giving us the Bible so that we can read it, learn from it, and as a result of that, know more about who you are and how much you love us. Lord, may your goodness guide us through life, both when we're happy and when we're sad. And may you bless this time with your presence as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time of worshiping together. We're going to start our lesson this morning. And like I said earlier, we're starting a brand new series. And the theme for this series is Dive In. And the reason for that is because the Bible is a lot like an ocean. How many people have seen the ocean? Probably most of us, right? We live here in Southern California. It's right there. But how many of us have actually taken that step and gone inside the ocean and actually went into the water? Anybody scuba dived or snorkeled before? I have. I love snorkeling because the ocean is so vast and it's so interesting. It's just full with life, whether it's fish or crabs or coral. There's so many living things in there and it's so deep and it's so wide. It's just such an amazing place to be. So a question I want us to consider this morning is, in light of the ocean, why should we learn how to swim? Well, I learned how to swim because, well, it's fun. It's a good way to cool off during the summertime. Um, but it's also so much more interesting to know how to swim and explore the ocean. If we don't know how to swim, we're not going to go anywhere near the pool or near the ocean, right? Because that's kind of scary. But if we learn how to swim, then we know how to navigate through the water. We know how to have fun in the pool. And now we have the opportunity to enjoy the ocean and everything that's in it. So many amazing things to see there. But we can only do that if we know how to swim. The Bible is just like the ocean. I mean, look at this thing. It's a huge book, longer than most of the books that I think a lot of us have read during our life so far. And there's so many words and there's so many pages. This book, the Bible, has a lot in common with the ocean. It's really, really deep in that it might not be the easiest thing to read. It'll take us a really long time. But most importantly, we have to know how to read it. And that's why it's important that we know how to swim in the ocean. And the parallel to that is we have to know how to read the Bible. We have to know how to study it, to understand it, so that it, we can allow it to teach us and we can allow it to grow our relationship with God. So together in this series, we're going to learn how to dive into the Bible and learn how to swim in it. I'm really excited. Our passage for this morning comes from 2 Timothy. Say that with me. 2 Timothy. Not 2 Timothy, like it says on the slide, but 2 Timothy is how you say it. And what this is, is a short letter that the apostle named Paul wrote to one of his greatest disciples by the name of Timothy. And some of you actually might be named Timothy. It's actually my middle name, which is kind of cool. But Timothy was a young pastor at the time who was actually in charge of a church at a very young age. So Paul wrote two letters to him. And today we're looking at a passage from that second letter. So if you don't have your Bibles yet, now's a good time to grab it because I want us to have a physical Bible to be reading through this passage together. So I'll give you a moment to grab that and then we'll jump back in. All right, we're going to start in verse 14 of 2 Timothy and we're going to go all the way to verse 17. Not very, very long, but there's so much good stuff in this short passage. So let's read along together. 2 Timothy verse 14. But I want you to continue to follow what you have learned and are sure about. You know the people you learned it from. Remember, Paul is writing this to his disciple Timothy. He's saying, Timothy, continue to learn from the Bible. Continue to surround yourself with people who care about the Bible and who know about the Bible so that they can teach you and you can teach them. Let's move on to verse 15. You have known the Holy Scriptures ever since you were a little child. They are able to teach you how to be saved by believing in Christ Jesus. This is a very great verse, right? Because Paul is telling Timothy now that ever since you were a little kid, and a lot of you are still very, very young, you have known the Holy Scriptures. In other words, since you're a little kid, you've known the Bible. You've been very good at studying it. 
Let me ask you all a question. In your young age, how well do you know your Bible? And even myself, there's so much room to grow in knowledge about the Bible. There's so much more that we could do to grow in our wisdom of what it teaches us. But at this stage, how well do you know the Bible? Paul knows that Timothy, even when he was young, he knew the Bible very, very well. It's very impressive. He also describes what the Bible can do for us now. He says they are able to teach you how to be saved by believing in Christ Jesus. So that's one aspect of the Bible that's really amazing, that this book can teach us how to be saved. And how can we be saved? By believing in Christ Jesus. We know that because that's what the Bible teaches. Let's move on to verse 16. Paul continues by saying, God has breathed life into all scripture. Once again, scripture is referring to the Bible. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. Did you guys notice something that a lot of these sentences had in common? Almost all of them started with the phrase, it is useful. So I don't know what more evidence we need for that, but he said it is useful so many times. This must be one useful book. And it really is. It is so, so useful. Why? It says right here, it's useful for teaching us what is true. That's very straightforward. There's things that are true and things that are false. We know that God stands for truth. So the Bible teaches truth. It helps us see things that are true. And it helps us also see things as a result of that, that are wrong and that are false. It's useful for correcting our mistakes. How many people have made a mistake in their life? I think a lot of us have. I'm pretty sure every one of us have made a mistake. We've gotten into an argument with our friends. We upset our parents. There's so many things that we can do wrong. But the Bible is useful in correcting us, in bringing us back to the right path when we fall off it, when we make mistakes. It helps us right our wrongs. He goes on to say, it is useful for making our lives whole again. Before we had a relationship with Jesus, we were not whole because we, did mis we made mistakes and we did wrong against God. But by knowing Jesus, we can be right with God. We can be on his side. And that's what the Bible teaches also, that we can be made whole again the way that we're supposed to be by listening to this teaching, which is to have a right relationship with God through Jesus. And lastly, Paul says it is useful for training us to do what is right. Another amazing thing about the Bible is that it tells us right from wrong. Our parents help us with that. A lot of times our friends who understand the Bible as well, whether they're pastors or other friends' parents or even your own friends who are close to your age, help us figure out what is right and what is wrong. And we know that God stands for what is right and the Bible teaches us how to do that. Let's move on to our final verse for this morning's passage, verse 17. Paul says, by using scripture, the servant of God can be completely prepared to do every good thing. Who is a servant of God? Let me ask you, what is a servant of God? And I hope a lot of you are raising your hands right now. I know I am because I am a servant of God. Everybody who believes in Jesus is a servant of God. He becomes our father and we become his sons and daughters. Paul is saying here in verse 17 that by using the Bible, by learning from it, the servant of God, every Christian doesn't have to worry because they will be prepared to do good works, to do good things for others in our community, in our church, anybody around us. If we use the Bible the way it's supposed to be, to learn more about God and to live more like Jesus, 
we will be ready to do good things. How awesome is that? That through this book, we can be equipped for that kind of work. It's amazing. I hope you all have been listening because it's time for this week's lesson trivia. This morning, I have five lesson trivia questions for you guys, and each of them are fill in the blank. So I'm looking for one word that will fill in the blank to complete the sentence. Are you ready? Let's see if some of you can get all five correctly. Let's start with number one. Today's passage comes from a letter written by blank to Timothy. Today's passage comes from a letter written by blank to Timothy. Do you guys know which person is the right name to fill in this blank? Let's see if some of us can start off strong. Paul is the right answer. Remember I said that Timothy is a letter that's named after Timothy, but it's actually written by the Apostle Paul, who is Timothy's discipler, his mentor. Good job, everyone. It's a good start. Let's move on to number two. All blank is God breathed. Do you remember when I discussed the idea of this answer being God breathed? Do you know what it is? Let's find out what the answer is. The answer is scripture, another name for the Bible. All scripture is God breathed. How cool is that? That means that the Bible actually is a record of what God has said. He actually breathed out these words and we have it in book form. We're actually reading something that God himself said. That's why it's truth. That's why it's amazing. So remember that the Bible that we'll be studying in this series is something that God himself breathed out. He said it just like I'm saying words right now and just like you speak to people around you. Good job on that second one. Let's move on to the third one, all right? The third question is, the blank is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Do you know the answer to this one? Very similar to the last one. That's a clue for you guys. The right answer is the Bible. The Bible is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This book teaches us so much, and this is just a few of the things that it teaches us to do. Good job, guys. We're almost there. We're on our fourth question out of five. I know some of you already have three for three. Let's see if you can get 100%. Number four, God wants us to read the Bible blank day. This one's very, very important. Can you get it? God wants us to read the Bible blank day. The answer is every day. Every day God wants us to read the Bible. And not only doing it as a chore, you know, something that we're annoyed by, but God wants us to read the Bible every day because we love it so much, because we rely on what it teaches so much. I know I love reading the Bible every day, and I know God wants all of us to be reading the Bible every day, whether it's a lot or a little, we know that there's so much good stuff in here, just like the ocean. Even 10 minutes of snorkeling, by the way, in the ocean is amazing. It's so much fun. You can see so many different things. The Bible is the exact same way. All right, everyone, we're down to our fifth and last question. Can you get 100% on this morning's lesson trivia? Let's find out. The last question reads, Don't stay in the shallows. Blank in and read the Bible. A little bit tricky, this one. Don't stay in the shallows. Blank in and read the Bible. Think about it for a second. If you need a clue, it's kind of a giveaway. The answer is actually on the slide somewhere. Ready for the answer? Here we go. The answer is die. Remember we talked about how the Bible's like the ocean? It's so vast, it's so large and so deep. Don't stay in the shallow areas of understanding and reading the Bible. Instead, we have to dive all the way in. We have to immerse ourselves and submerge ourselves in what the Bible teaches. That's why we have to learn how to swim. Dive in and read the Bible. Good job to everybody 
who participated in this lesson trivia and a high five to those of you that got five out of five. Well done. Here's a little bit of a quiz for you guys. Do you remember what Auntie Ruby actually spoke on last week for the Sunday lesson? I'm going to refresh your memory a little bit. Auntie Ruby talked about the last part of Jesus's life, his death and resurrection, why we have to believe in that. But more specifically, Auntie Ruby gave us a really, really good tool for remembering what it's like to follow Jesus. And she used this ABC, a let, these three letters to remember each of those steps. Do, do any of you remember what the ABC stands for? I'm not talking about the alphabet. Each letter stands for something very, very important to the Christian. If you don't remember, that's okay, because I'm going to refresh your memory really quick right now. The A stands for admitting that you're a sinner. That before we met God, we were just sinners. We were in rebellion against him. We did wrong things against him, and we made mistakes. That God was not on our side, and we were not on God's side. The first step is that A, admitting you're a sinner. But that second step, B, stands for Believing in Jesus, I'm trying to make sure I remember too. Believing in Jesus is the second step. You admit you're a sinner, you believe in Jesus, but there's a third one. And the third one is so, so important. The third one stands for committing to Jesus. The C in ABC. What does committing to Jesus look like? It looks very, very, it looks very, very, um, it's unique. You know, what does a committed follower of Jesus look like? You know, it's somebody who prays all the time. It's somebody who knows their Bible, as we're going to study in this series. It's somebody who does good works for other people, no matter who they are, whether they're rich or they're poor, whether it's people that you like or don't like, you love everybody around you. That's what it looks like to be a committed follower of Christ. That's what a Christian should be. So once again, ABC stands for admit you're a sinner, believe in Christ, and commit to Christ. Definitely remember that. It's very, very helpful. And thank you to Auntie Ruby for teaching us that good way of remembering. She also spoke briefly, especially during this time, this difficult time of the coronavirus, that we have to be doing good works. And what she means by this is when we do good works for the world and the people around us, people are kind of, they're curious about that sometimes, right? For example, Auntie Ruby is part of a ministry right now that's handing out masks to people that need it. Healthcare workers, friends, family, anybody in the community that needs masks right now to protect themselves. And some of them might be wondering, how come everybody else is so scared to leave their homes? But you know, everybody, you guys are coming out here and giving us masks and taking that risk. And somebody like Auntie Ruby or myself would say, we're doing this because God did this for us. Jesus died on a cross for us. And that is just the ultimate act of love. So God therefore commanded us to share that love with everybody else. And that can be little things such as putting together these masks and giving them out to people who need them. There's so many ways we can love people around us. And that is something that really, really exemplifies, that makes us truly Christian, truly understanding what the Bible teaches, that because we love God, we have to love our neighbors too. So now's a really good opportunity to do that. And I encourage all of you to find some way to do some good work so that other people can come to know the love of God like we do as a church. Going back to what we read today in 2 Timothy, Paul's words to his disciple Timothy, he said that every part of the Bible essentially has something to teach us. There's so much depth to the Bible. And even these four verses that we read today were just amazing, right? So much substance in such a short passage. Imagine reading the whole thing. There's so much to be learned from it. And we're going to learn together how to do that well. Here's kind of a fun fact for you to, to, to think about how deep the ocean is. On average, the ocean is actually 2.3 miles deep. 
miles deep. And the deepest part of the ocean is seven miles deep. Can you imagine that? Vertically, it's seven miles deep, the deepest part of the ocean. I would argue that this book, the Bible, is even deeper than the ocean, even deeper than seven miles. This had so much depth to it, and that's why we're going to give ourselves the tools together through this series to dive into the Bible and learn how to study it and learn about what it says. So don't be scared. We're going to learn how to swim together. An assignment that I have for all of you listening this morning is why don't we get started right now? Why don't we just jump in? Let's try to read the Bible every day, whether it's a lot or a little bit, it doesn't matter. Let's try to read some every single day and see what happens. I truly, truly believe that it will be a huge encouragement to you and it's going to be a wonderful time. I also encourage you to read with your friends, which is kind of hard right now because we shouldn't be going out. So instead, why don't we read with our siblings or our parents or mom or dad, invite them in to read with you for a little bit and share about a couple of things. For example, you know, is there anything that stood out to you in what you read? Did something kind of stick in your mind that you thought was really, really cool or really, really interesting in that passage that you read? Or you can just share with each other what's something that you learned. We read four verses today, very, very short, but we learned so much. Every verse in the Bible has something that we can learn about it. So what did you learn in what you read? Share that with your mom, your dad, or your siblings. Definitely let that soak in and enjoy the experience of reading the Bible every single day. If you need a suggestion, why don't you start with the Gospel of John and read about the life of Jesus again. I'm going to close our time this morning with a huge thank you to those who responded to Auntie Ruby's uh, call to write little encouragement notes on post-its. And I have some photos that I would love to share with you all of those who wrote some really, really nice notes. So here on the left, we have one from, I believe, Lucas. Yes, Lucas, who wrote so many hard work to do. And he's right. There's so many things that we could be doing to help out our communities, but it's all really good work because we're doing it for God. And he wrote God there on his post-it note, as well as the Bible, which we're going to be studying together, and a church there with a cross to remind us that we are representatives of Jesus to this world. So we have to do what Jesus would do. Love our neighbors, serve them in any way we can so that the love of God can be shown in our world. Great note. Thank you, Lucas. On the right side, we have Annika, who wrote on a post-it note a really short but amazing encouragement. God bless you. That is such a good reminder of how God blesses us. There's so many things in our lives that we are thankful for, right? So God bless you all as well. Let's always be saying that constantly and giving him all of the praise and the thanksgiving that we can. Thank you, Annika, for that post-it note. I have two more. Uh, the next one on the left here, Audrey wrote, God is good. May he bless you and your family and friends. Ask him for help uh, when you need to. He will answer your prayers like if you're scared. And a lot of us can be scared right now. In those moments of fear and scariness, let's pray to God. He'll give us a peace of mind knowing that he's with us and that our faith in him is effective and true. So thank you, Audrey for that encouraging post-it note. And she also drew a cute picture of a dog on the bottom and a really, really funny, cool phrase where she says, and stay positive. Do you see that play on words there? She wrote positive. So that's also a really good encouragement to stay positive, especially now. Thanks, Audrey, for that encouragement. And the final one I have here, I cannot read because unfortunately I cannot read Chinese characters, but it looks like it's the verse John 3, 16 written out on a post-it note and anything from the Bible, any verse is so encouraging. So thank you so much for that encouraging post-it note with John 3, 16 on it. And I know a lot of you still have that memorized. So that's a great one to be writing on a post-it note. If you still want to do this project, please just send in photos of your post-it notes and we'd love to show it 
uh, during a Sunday message. So this is still open to everyone. If you want to jump in right now, we'd love to talk about them and thank you for them uh, next Sunday as well. So uh, if you feel inspired, I would say go for it. Auntie Ruby is also continuing a card and mask project. So feel free to contact her if you have a request. If you need a mask, she would love to give you some uh, to meet your needs. Or if you have an encouragement card that you want to use to encourage the church or just the entire world, please write that out and send it to Auntie Ruby as well. She'd love to uh, share that with everybody, uh, everybody in our community. So that is also another opportunity. Our time is over together, but we will be together very, very soon. And during the week, my encouragement to you once again is to read the Bible, even if just a little bit, and see what happens. Why don't we close in a time of prayer, and then we'll reunite very, very soon next Sunday. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for today's lesson, reminding us that your Bible is important because they contain your very words. You breathe them out. And God, your Bible is like the ocean. It's so deep and we need to know how to swim in it. And we're going to embark on this journey together. So Lord, may you empower us to learn the Bible together, to learn how to study it and to read it so that we can know more about your love and how much you love us. Thank you for our time together this morning, and may you continue to watch over and bless all of our brothers and sisters, the kids, the parents, the entire church. Thank you, Lord. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone. It was wonderful seeing you. Have a blessed week. See you next time.